بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Today we will have case quiz number 110 and sorry for delay because of عيد الأضحى المبارك وكل عام وأنتم بخير Case data 36 years old male with history of work related solvent exposure Presented with headache, vomiting, and fever. Symptoms persisted in spite of antibiotic therapy. CT scan showed a high potency image in the left parietal lobe (CT brain, I mean). MRI brain revealed a parietal lesion hypo-intense on T1 and hyper-intense on T2 and the flare without mass effect. Thoracic CT scan show by apical interstitial infiltrates. Standard TB treatment was indicated along with steroid obtaining a partial clinical response. Two months later, following steroid tapering, significant clinical deterioration was observed with fever, headache, and nausea. Patient was re-evaluated showing no change on the MRI, so the same picture as the previous MRI. BCR testing for several microorganisms were negative. Differential diagnosis here considered recurrent meningitis, none otherwise specified, versus vasculitis versus ADEM, acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, ADEM. A new course of methyl prednisolone was administered, ad administered, after which patient requested voluntary discharge. The patient discharged by his request. One month later, patient returned with persistent fever and headache. A methyl prednisolone bolus was administered and partial transient response observed. At this time, the diagnosis consistent with ADAM refractory to steroid and treatment was switched to immunoglobulin therapy which led to a complete clinical response complete remission I mean once again patient requested voluntary discharge but had to be readmitted later due to headache fever medical confusion and aphasia one month later new CSF BCR ruled out viral diseases and TB other differential diagnoses considered including uh, Marburg disease, CNS lymphoma, and neurobish disease. The patient then suffered rapid clinical decline, developing limb weakness, somnolence, and hyponatremia, and died within few days. Autopsy was performed. Coronal sections were obtained and the standard histological sections uh, processed with hematoxylin and the eucine, PAS, Zeal, Nelson, uh, Jimsa, and uh, uh, Grocot stains, as well as immune histochemical uh, histochemistry for beta amyloid. Neuropathological assessment demonstrated a necrotizing cerebral lesion in the partial region, in the right, sorry, in the right region showing prominent vasculitis, vasculitis with a small round isonophilic adjacent blood vessels second isonophilic leptomeninges with vasculitis and the presence of multinucleated giant cells were also observed use of BAS, Zeal, Nelson, uh, Jimsa uh, or uh, Grocotestain didn't identify presence of microorganisms Blood vessels, uh, both uh, leptomeningeal and in the uh, neutrophil, and uh, in, in the neuro, uh, neurobil, and leptomeninges in the same area were positive for beta amyloid immunohistochemistry. The above mentioned histopathologic findings were restricted to the lesional area. Adjacent brain tissue shows signs of uh, uh, anoxic ischemic encephalopathy. So, what is the diagnosis? The 
answer is Inflammatory amyloid angiopathy and the leptomeningeal amyloidosis with inflammation. Inflammatory amyloid angiopathy and leptomeningeal amyloidosis with inflammation. Discussion of the diagnosis. We report an unusual case of vasculitic inflammatory cerebral amyloid angiopathy associated with zonal leptomeningeal beta amyloid deposits and inflammation in a young 36 years of age, cognitively intact subject without AD changes in the neutrophil, I mean Alzheimer disease changes. Aside from the better known histological characteristics of Alzheimer disease, AD, such as presence of a diffuse and uh, neuritic plaques due to presence of beta amyloid deposition and neurofibrillary changes resulting from hypophosphorylation of tau protein. Uh, a beta deposit scan can also be found within a leptomeningeal and intraparenchymal blood vessel wall, which is of any size, i.e., large, medium, or small blood vessels a condition known as cerebral amyloid angiopathy, CAA. In fact, this is a common finding at, at autopsy, both in subjects presenting sporadic AD as well as familial AD cases. CAA characterized by beta amyloid deposits in a small, medium, or large size leptomeningeal and intracerebral blood vessel wall. Degenerative changes secondary to A beta deposits in the blood vessels wall may be predisposed to rupture leading to spontaneous cerebral hemorrhage. Less frequently, CAA may be asymptomatic or contribute to cognitive impairment as a result of cerebral ischemia and microhemorrhages. Most CAA cases are sporadic, affecting elderly individuals with or without additional morphological evidence of Alzheimer's disease pathology. Although a common feature in uh, transthyretine uh, amyloidosis, leptomeningeal amyloid deposit could also be considered characteristic of CAA. Inflammatory cerebral amyloid angiopathy CAA I, is a less frequent form of CAA, most commonly presenting with cognitive decline, acute or subacute onset of headaches, behavioral changes, focal neurological deficits, and more rarely fever. Mean patient age is 69 years with range of 42 to 84, and the clinical course is usually aggressive. Characteristic MRI findings show patchy or confluent T2 or fluid attenuation and version recovery, flare, uh, hyperintensity. Brain samples from CAA-I patients show vascular amyloid deposition in addition to perivascular and or parietal inflammatory infiltrate with or without giant cell formation. Although CAA-I patients are significantly younger than patients with CAA alone, diagnostic criteria suggest that uh, they will generally be 40 years or older. Only 10% of repeated patients, of reported patients, sorry, are under the age of 50 years. The majority of cases respond at least partially to immunosuppressive therapy rendering CAA-I a form of CAA amenable to treatment, however recurrences have occasionally been reported. Therefore, prompt diagnosis is a key for adequate management. Finally, it has been observed that uh, from a clinical standpoint, CAA-I often resembled primary CNS vasculitis, BCNVSV, BC, uh, BCNSV, sorry. Uh, primary CNS vasculitis, which be CNSV more than CAA. In our case, the aggressive clinical course imaging characteristics response observed uh, uh, to immunosuppressive therapy and the patient's younger age only six, uh, 36 years 
and the absence of cognitive impairment would all be in line with this concept. In fact, a cut of, of 40 years of age had been suggested as a diagnostic of CAA-I, whereas mean age at diagnosis for BCNSV is 42 years. It has also been speculated that the similarities between CAA-I and the BCNSV stem uh, from the driving role of vascular inflammation in determining disease manifestations. In this case, however, histological and immunohistochemical analysis confirmed CAA-I as a diagnosis, underscoring the need to consider CAA-I among the differential even in younger patients. Amyloid deposits could be uh, acting as immune response trigger in this condition, which in turn may play a direct role in the aggressive clinical course ob uh, observed in, this patients, in these patients. What about the key messages of this case? Our report illustrates a case of zonal CAA-I with leptomeningeal amyloidosis in an unusually young patient with intact cognition and aggressive clinical course. And finally, thank you very much for your attendance and we will meet you tomorrow inshallah with case quiz number 111. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته